Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Wujaha and this is the third part of the recent series where we talked about making passive income in crypto. If you haven't seen the first two episodes or the first two videos, then go on the channel, go watch them. They were a beginner's guide and an intermediate guide, whereas the strategies that we talk about today are going to be a little bit more high level and complicated. So as always, let's get straight to it. I think it's just important to know, as always, that nothing that I show you today is financial advice. You know, this is DeFi. Some of these protocols might not even exist in the future. So always do your own research. And, you know, everything that I show you today is just going to be purely for educational purposes. Uh, apologies if my voice sounds a little bit different as well. I have unfortunately caught COVID, but I really wanted to get this video out. So anyway, let's just go straight to the computer. And the first protocol, the first kind of strategy that I want to focus on is Curve. And Curve has been in the news a lot recently. Uh, the curve wars, they've been heating up big time. But what actually is going on, you know, behind the scenes? So to go to go and access this uh, protocol, you have to go to curve.finance or curve.fi and you'll approach this kind of Windows 98 looking theme. I think this interface looks fantastic. Some people are very, very confused when they come to an interface like this and think that they've gone onto the wrong website. This is what it's meant to look like, okay? You connect your wallet and, you know, Curve has a variety of different uh, networks, Ethereum, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Phantom, Harmony, Polygon. So, you know, you've got plenty of different options, but most of the stuff happens on Ethereum here. So we're gonna focus on Ethereum and particularly for those whales who have a lot more capital to kind of play around with. Now, what actually is Curve? Well, Curve is a decentralized exchange and it's probably one of the best decentralized exchanges uh, because of how deep its liquidity is. Uh, and Curve really focuses on stable coins. So if I click here, you'll be able to see, you know, there's a bunch of stable coins here. Now, there are other assets as well. Like we can see different variations of Bitcoin and uh, a few different variations of other assets like Ethereum. But most of these die USDC, USDT, BUSD. I'm um, sure they've got UST here as well, a few Euro stable coins. They specialize in stable coins. And what you can do here is that you can basically exchange, you know, one stable coin for another with very little uh, slippage. And essentially what that means is, you know, if you're swapping, you know, a large amount of stable coins here, you can do so very easily. And because of that, I think institutions use Curve a lot, you know, centralized exchanges use Curve a lot, and that's because they get very good rates here. Now, if you scroll down, you're going to find a lot of these liquidity pools here and you can basically provide liquidity here uh, for some of your favorite assets. And again, most of these are stable coins. If I click see all pools, you're going to see a ton of different pools that you can basically provide liquidity for. And if you go to the right, you'll kind of see the rewards. So, you know, you can find, let's say you want to provide liquidity for MIM and UST. Well, you can provide liquidity here and you'll probably earn about 0.36% here. Now, you know, that's not really significant, but the extra rewards are in the next column where you can earn between 5 and 13% a year in Curve rewards. Um, so that's kind of the first way that you can actually use Curve to kind of make passive income in crypto. You can kind of provide liquidity for stable coins like MIM and UST or, you know, some of these other assets as well. You've got, they've got Euro stable coins and... Uh, you know, some of the other ones that I mentioned where you can earn, you know, easily, easily earn 10% uh, a year, if not more. Um, now, the second way is through the Curve token itself. And, and Curve, uh, the, the, the Curve token, sorry, it's a governance token. And it's actually one of the best governance tokens around just because of the utility behind it. Now, what, how does it work and, you know, how can you actually use it? So if you go to the top and click use Curve, um, you can see here that we've come to this interface where it tells you about locking up your Curve tokens. And you can see here that we can lock up one Curve token for four years, and in return we get one VE Curve token. And if you lock it up for you know less time, like one year, you only get a quarter of that amount. Now, what is a VE Curve token? Well, VE stands for Voted Escrow Curve Token. So essentially, you're locking up your Curve token and you're getting a voted escrow Curve token, which is the token that's used in governance. It's a token that's used in voting. And we'll go on to why that's so important. So yeah, it's uh, it's as simple as just, you know, uh, converting your tokens. You can do that on the Curve platform itself. Now, what, why would you, you know, convert your tokens into VE Curve? What is the benefit? Well. An important thing to understand before we even go on to that is that this is kind of irreversible. You know, once you've got your VE Curve tokens, you just kind of have to wait. You can't sell them. You can't transfer them from one wallet to another. You know, they're, they're locked. 
they're, they're fully locked. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, now, VE Curve Token gives you a number of benefits. Uh, and, you know, we'll talk about the main one first. Well, you see, if we go back to the home page and we see all these different pools here, uh, they all have different rewards. You know, some are 9%, some are 11%, 13%, you know, some are 31%. And you have to ask yourself, you know, why are they all different? Well, ultimately, it's because people are using their VE Curve tokens and voting on where they want to see rewards go. And if I go to one of these tabs, we'll be able to see the gauge allocation, you know, for these different pools. We'll be able to see where people are voting for where they want allocation. So where they want kind of rewards to go. And rewards will go to the ones that have the highest gauge weighting, as simple as that. Oh, so here's where you kind of lock up your curve tokens. Uh, you know, you can lock up 100 or whatever, and you can kind of you know, lock them up for as long as possible. Uh, and then afterwards, you can kind of use your VE curve tokens to vote. And every single week, you can vote on kind of where you want allocation of rewards to go. So that's kind of the first benefit of VE curve, because if you're in a particular pool that you really, um, that, you, that you like, and you kind of, are providing liquidity for it let's say let's say the you know the mim ust pool well you might want to vote for this pool so that the rewards continuously go up uh, and what we'll find what you'll find is that there's a number of protocols that are basically buying up curves so that they can vote for their own pools and so they get deeper liquidity uh, and that's kind of where the curve wars have really started now the other benefits of holding curve are well you see all of these um, you see when you kind of uh, trade from one asset to another well, you have to pay some fees, don't you? Um, and those fees, 50% of them, will go to VE Curve holders. So yeah, there, there's a kind of income coming from there as well. And the last thing is that, well, VE Curve holders are often bribed with airdrops and bribes themselves to kind of vote for specific pools. And if we go to a website like Bribes or Curve, I can't type. Um, well, we can see that once it loads is that, you know, there are a number of rewards that we can get like spell tokens if we vote for the uh, MIM3 pool. And, you know, these are kind of bribes, some voting incentives that different protocols will give VE curve holders if they vote for their particular pool. Um, so yeah, Curve is really, really interesting. I mean, it kind of makes sense why it's the number one DeFi application. It's got the largest TVL of all DeFi applications. There's so much to it. You know, I could uh, go on and on and on for a long time on Curve. So I'll save, you know, the, the, the specifics and the, in the real fine details for that video. But essentially, this is just one protocol where you can kind of earn some nice passive income. And this is kind of a higher level strategy here. Now, Convex is uh, a platform that's linked very closely to Curve. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'll kind of save that for another video in the future. But what you can do here, as it says here, you can convert your Curve into Convex Curve, uh, and then you can kind of stake it here. Again, that process is irreversible. Um, but the good thing is, is that Convex Curve is actually liquid. So you can actually go to, you know, other exchanges, you can go to Uniswap, and you can actually sell your Convex Curve token. So it kind of provides you with some element of liquidity if you ever wanted to kind of cash out. Uh, and when you convert your Curve to Convex Curve, you basically still get the same rewards as holding VE Curve. But on top of that, you kind of get some Convex rewards as well and you can kind of click on this information and see the different rewards here. And I recommend just having a play on the platform and just having a look at kind of how it works exactly. But uh, Convex is linked very, very closely to Curve. Uh, they play a crucial role in the Curve Wars as well because they own a significant number of Curve tokens too. So uh, I'll let you kind of research that in more detail or wait for my videos about that to come out in the future. But these are two protocols that I think are fantastic. They are the number one and number two DeFi applications uh, that exists really. So um, very, very powerful applications. Right, let's move on to the kind of next strategy here. And we're gonna go to Anchor. <laughs> Anchor is one of our favorite apps on this, pro on, on, this uh, on this channel, if you're not aware already. Uh, I've made quite a few videos about Anchor and why it's so good. So yeah, let's go, let's go to Anchor. Let's go to the um, earn section. And as you're, as you're aware, you can kind of earn on your stable coins here. And we talked about that in the beginner's guide. Well, we're gonna kind of, 
leverage our position up a little bit. So instead of earning 19%, we can kind of double this. So let's talk about how can we actually do that. And uh, we're gonna do this by leveraging Mirror Protocol. Now, one thing to note uh, is that when you kind of deposit UST into Anchor Earn, well, you get, you, you're returned with AUST. And AUST is another token that kind of represents your position. Uh, in the Anchor Earn section. And an AUST uh, is a token that increases in value against UST. So you might think that one UST equals eight, one AUST, well that's not the case because Anchor's been around for almost a year now. So one AUST almost equals 1.2 UST. Uh, that's just because it's been going up by this amount every single, every single day essentially. Oh, this amount every year, sorry. So uh, when you kind of deposit, you know, if you deposit 10,000 UST, well, you're not gonna be getting uh, 10,000 AUST, you're gonna have like 8,000 something AUST in your wallet. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. You've got your AS AUST in your wallet once you've deposited some UST in here. And remember that AUST is constantly going up in value. Well, how can we kind of leverage that? Well, if we go to Mirror, and for those of you who are unaware, Mirror is a platform where you can buy synthetic assets uh, like Facebook, Google, Robinhood, Microsoft, etc. And we're gonna to go to the Farm tab, and I'm on the testnet here, so that's why these APRs look a bit ridiculous. But essentially, in this strategy, what we need to do is we need to find an asset that is not going to perform well, and that's because we're going to short a asset. We're gonna short an asset. So we need to find one that's pretty poor. Now, you know, Google, you know, uh, Apple, they've had wonderful years. So, you know, we're not gonna really be picking assets like that. Instead, we're gonna pick an asset, something like silver. Uh, the iShare Silver Trust has generally performed very poorly. Um, let's have a look year to date. I mean, uh, one, over the last year, you know, it's minus 12%. Now, obviously this is not financial advice. I don't, I don't know what silver is gonna do in the future. You need to do some research and basically find an asset that's not gonna perform well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna short it. Uh, and what you'll find is on, on Mirror is that you don't need UST to short. You can actually short with AUST. Now remember, look, I've got uh, 8,400 um, AUST. That represents my uh, position on Anchor here. Yep, so you know, this amount of AUST equals this amount of UST. And that's because uh, AUST is constantly going up against UST. Well, so you know, we've got 10K UST worth of AUST and we're gonna short silver. And you might think, why the hell are we gonna short silver? Well, that's because when we're shorting, we're kind of borrowing an asset, selling it immediately. And in return, we're gonna be given UST. Uh, and you might think, why is it only 5K instead of 10K? Well, it's because we're using a collateral ratio of 200%, okay? So that's just to kind of be on the safe side. So we're gonna get 5K when shorting silver here. And you know, this will be uh, unlocked in two weeks time. Now, we've got 5K UST, we've got 10K UST locked up in here, that's going up 20% already. So what are, we, what are we gonna do with this 5K? Well, we're gonna go back to Anchor and we're gonna deposit another 5K. So now this is gonna say 15K, okay? You're with me so far. And now we're earning 20% on 15K. Plus we have a short position open. Now, the reason why I said we needed to pick an asset that isn't gonna perform well is because if silver goes up in price, well, our short position is not gonna do so well. The good thing is, is that, well, on the testnet, it doesn't show accurate APRs, but when we're shorting, we're actually getting paid to do that as well. And it ranges between five and 20%. So that's pretty good. So you're getting paid not only to short, but we're also using that money that we got from the short to go back to anchor and leverage our position up. Now we've got another 5K UST. Well, what we can do is we can go back and we can short silver again with the extra 5K uh, UST that we've deposited in Anchor. So we'll, get, we'll select a UST again. Remember this time it's gonna be, you know, about 4,100 or something like that because a UST obviously is worth more than UST. And we're gonna short again. And again, we're gonna use a 200% collateral ratio. And this is gonna give us two and a half thousand now. And you, you can see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take that again. We're gonna go back to Anchor, deposit that again. And we're gonna repeat this cycle for as long as we possibly can until it no longer makes sense to do so anymore. And what you'll find is that, you know, we started off with 10K, then 15K, then 17 and a half K, and then around 19K. And, you know, our original 10K has almost doubled. And therefore, you know, we've kind of doubled this AP, APY as well. Remember, we're also getting paid to short that particular asset. So in this case, silver. And as long as silver doesn't outperform the 20% a year or doesn't outperform 
uh, the short farm, well, you are actually making quite a significant uh, profit there. Uh, and this is some really nice passive income. Uh, you know, that doesn't expose you to any sort of crypto asset really, apart from UST. Uh, and, and we all know that UST is an algorithmic stable coin. Generally, I'd like to think that UST will remain at its peg around $1 as well. So there are still risks associated, associated with this. We're not just using one smart contract, but we're using two. And of course we have the risk of UST losing its peg. And of course we have the risk of silver performing really, really well. So there's a number of different risks here that are important to be aware of, but if you kind of weigh them up and in your opinion, if this is a good strategy, well, you can change this 19% and make it into the high 30s, which I think is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's this strategy. The, the last strategy that I really wanna talk about is the Abracadabra strategy. And I'm sure some of you guys watching already know about this, but for those of you who don't, this is a way to supercharge your rewards, supercharge your earnings on stable coins, and especially, or specifically, UST. Now, on Abracadabra, we're gonna to go to the Borrow tab, and this is on the Ethereum network, so just bear that in mind. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna look for this one, the UST, uh, and this is called the DGEN box strategy. Now, on Abracadabra, what we could do is we can, pro we can provide collateral and we can borrow magic internet money and magic internet money is an algorithmic, I don't think it's algorithmic, sorry. It's an over collateralized uh, stable coin uh, built by uh, Abracadabra. So what we can actually do here is we can actually deposit UST and we can borrow magic internet money against it. And by doing so, you know, what happens is that, is that Abracadabra will take this UST, they'll go to Anchor, they'll chuck it in here and you know, happy days you know, you can earn yourself some money. Now they will only pay you 16.5% rather than 19.5%, but um, I'll tell you why it doesn't matter. What you can do is you can do something called looping or leverage. And what you can actually do is you can scroll down here, you can click change leverage, and you can kind of loop your strategy quite a number of times here. And look, you can see here that, you know, we've gone eight times already. Now, what am I actually talking about? Well. Remember that I said that you know you can deposit some UST and you can borrow magic internet money against it. Well, MIM is a stable coin too. And what this protocol will do is it'll take it your MIM for you automatically. It'll go to Curve. It'll, so let's go to Curve. Let's find MIM. Let's find UST. Where's UST? Yeah. So it'll swap that MIM for UST. It'll take that to Anchor and deposit that in here. And then you'll borrow some more UST against that. Or, oh, sorry, so yeah, we're gonna take that MIM, it's converted to UST, and then we're gonna go back here, deposit some more, borrow some more MIM, deposit some more, borrow some more MIM, swap it, deposit some more. And we're gonna loop this as much as possible. So, you know, instead of actually having exposure to just 100 UST where we have uh, more, way more exposure. And that's why we can kind of see this expected leverage. Now what that, what that does mean is that your liquidation price can go quite high. And look, we can see here that, you know, out of five, well, what, what were we at before? Uh, an 8X leverage, you know, our liquidation price is pretty close. So if one of these assets loses its peg, well, we're in trouble here really. Um, but what you can do is you can actually lower your liquidation price and you know, even at 90 cents, you're still at a 4X leverage and look at the APY that you're earning there, 85%. So you could literally take, you know, 10,000 UST and you know, earn, if we use leverage here, you know, earn a significant amount. Now this isn't up updated because we haven't changed the amount of MIM that we're borrowing against that, uh, but all right, forget about that. I, I think entering this 10,000 just messed it up. It's because I don't have any UST in my wallet. Anyway, so yeah, you can use this strategy. Now it does charge interest. There is a borrow fee, there is a liquidation fee. So all of these things are important to be aware of. And you can see that UST and MIM are not exactly equal to one another. They're pretty close, but not exactly. So yeah, this is a strategy where you can kind of use stable coins as collateral, borrow against them, loop them around, use leverage and, you know, earn a ridiculous amount. So um, yeah, I think uh, it's a good strategy. It's a good strategy to use. Um, 
there are really high risks associated with this strategy. So just bear that in mind. Those risks are smart contract risk. Well, you're not just using one smart contract here. We're using multiple. We're using Abracadabra. We're using Anchor. We're using Curve. Where we've got exposure to two assets, which are which can depeg. So again, that's another thing to be aware of. And of course, our liquidation price. Uh, I mean, right now it, it's kind of bugged out. Let me refresh this. But if you kind of use too much leverage, well, your liquidation price uh, can really, really get affected. So um, that is something to be aware of. Look, I mean, look at this. We can max it all the way, <laughs> but you'll pretty much get liquidated almost immediately. Uh, and that will pay you 156%. So yeah, I mean, even if you play it quite safe, you know, your liquidation price of 70 cents, well, you're doubling your anchor earn already at 44%. You know, you could get it to, you know, possibly, you know, around the 80s. And I think generally you'd be able to sleep fine with that. Having said that, look, both these assets have lost their peg before. Remember UST back in summer 21, you know, went down 10% in value. I mean, it did regain its peg, but again, these are just things to be aware of. Smart contracts do go wrong. Uh, this is also an Ethereum, so you have to, you have to count uh, the gas fees as well. When you actually set this position up, you have to do four different transactions to kind of approve UST, approve MIM. Uh, there's four transactions, four gas fees. Bear that in mind when you actually start something like this. It's not worth it if you're only playing around with a thousand or five thousand, even ten thousand really. I think you really need to be uh, in the you know high five figures really before you're really making the most of this strategy. The good thing though, the good thing though, sorry, is that this is coming to Phantom, and when it does, whew, I think things are going to be real, real exciting. So uh, anyway, those are the three different strategies that I kind of just wanted to talk about today, or four strategies if you include Convex as well. Of course, there's so many others. DeFi is amazing. I'm going to have more videos like this in the future where I kind of show you different strategies. Let me know what your favorite one is down below, or if there's one that I haven't covered that you think is really powerful or, or really good. Let me know in the comment section below. As always, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back with another video soon.